Good morning. Uh, let's see if I have. So thank you, Dave, for the introduction um, and Jürgen Play for your very vivid um, description of the complexity and the reality of the, the health challenges that, that we're facing, uh, both here in South Africa, across Africa, uh, across the developing world. In starting this report, uh, starting this study, we, we really wanted to start from, from that question. What, what is the real need that we're looking at here? Um, and I'm sure, as everyone in this room is probably saying, at least one example of someone who has a phone, let's call it a hammer, and so everything starts looking like a nail. Um, but the question we wanted to ask is, at stepping back, saying, what is the need that we're seeing? Uh, what are the challenges? What are some of the solutions that we're seeing? Um, and then looking to identify opportunities and challenges that, that those organizations, institutions are facing. So um, as you can play, as already mentioned, there, there's a significant challenge in terms of uh, being able to serve the burdens that are facing women and children and families. Um, What's, what's needed to, to try and address this, a significant uh, increase in the number of health workers that are available in developing countries. So uh, the statistics that we've seen saying in 2008 there were about 2.1 health, health workers uh, in the developing world, and what's actually needed is another 2.9 to 3.5. I think the, the number uh, Yogan mentioned was, was 4.3. So it's over double what we have today. Um, and what does this mean? Well, this is, this is something that's costly. Uh, it's timely to try and do, um, and relying on the tra traditional medical professionals, doctors, nurses, who, um, who have to go through years of training um, is not going to get us there fast enough. And so as we're seeing, there is more of an investment in health workers, in nurses, in paraprofessionals, um, trying to adjust some of those, those needs. But is there evidence that investing in, in healthcare workers, and what is the investment in, in healthcare workers that will actually get us to uh, improvement in health outcomes? Um, looking across uh, a number of a number of reports and research on this topic, we two of the two of the ways that we we saw results uh, manifesting were through the additional training of healthcare workers and empowerment of individuals. So here we have two examples in Bangladesh um, where the the training of um, skilled birth attendants, for example, was demonstrating a clear outcome on improved uh, health outcomes for, for individuals, uh, for improved, improved births. So what that, what that says to us is that, that there is something about training. There is something about improving training, uh, and there's an opportunity there that can lead to improve, improved health outcomes. So we've defined the need and then the question becoming, what is this opportunity we're talking about? I'm sure many of these statistics will not be new to you, um, but 5.3 5 billion phones uh, worldwide at the end of 2010, 3.8 in the developing world alone. Um, as as uh, Jürgen has mentioned, in South Africa, we're now rapidly approaching if we've not exceeded 100%. What becomes interesting there is that we know that mobile phone penetration is rapidly increasing, and we know that almost any family, uh, certainly this, this country at least, has access to one phone. What then becomes an also interesting question is, what are the types of solutions, the, the types of technologies on that phone? And so as we, we often talk about the low-end phones, and then we talk about the smartphones, the iPhones. But there's actually an interesting opportunity somewhere in the middle, something called, you know, let's call it a feature phone, internet enabled. And as you'll hear from some colleagues today, there are some real opportunities um, to explore solutions that could be delivered uh, through this vehicle. Um, an estimate from a few individuals who spoke with says upwards of 50% of the phones in South Africa could have this feature. Is it being used? Is it enabled? Is it an opportunity? Um, and we're also seeing that mobile phones have been addressing development issues uh, across a variety of areas, ranging from agriculture to uh, finance, uh, access, access to money, and educational services as well. We're seeing some results there, so the question becoming, what are the opportunities in health? So how do we bring these two things together? We've defined the need, and we've, we've recognized this opportunity. We wanted to step back uh, before we even went into exactly what's happening now. And as we thought about the initiatives we had seen, we, we thought the universe of this, we've seen the universe as it stands today. We also want to think about what is the, the realm of possibility. So we started to, to put together uh, 
what, a framework for thinking about it. We started with the need. What are the needs? There's uh, the availability of training as a need, access to information, the time efficiencies required, of cost reductions and quality improvements are all needs for the healthcare system. And then we started asking the question, well, who actually would we be targeting? And two major groups jumped up. Uh, first was the community health workers or health workers as a whole. Um, and this could include your medical professionals, health institutions or students who are, are involved in learning, um, professionals, um, other outside of the formal health system, and then the community and individu individuals. So we have this combination of community health workers or health workers broadly, and actually empowering individuals to take, um, to have the ability to take some ownership of, of their health needs. We then ask the question, well, what is the type of content that we're seeing being delivered either now or potentially in the future? And this was a broad range, ranging from a medical reference library, um, where it's just an active resource that, that's in the back pocket of a, a community health worker, um, to something slightly more intensive and not quite to the point of replacing your brick and mortar classroom type structure, but figuring out ways that curriculum can be delivered uh, in, a more, in a more creative way, whether it's outside of a classroom or a supplement to something that's happening in a classroom. And then finally, how is the information being delivered? Uh, the question of what kind of device is being used? Is it a low-end phone? Is it a feature phone? Is it a smartphone? Or is it another mobile-enabled device, a uh, tablet, for example? And within that category, what is the channel uh, that's being used to, to transmit the information? Is it an SMS? Is it a mobile website? Is it some sort of application that, that sits on the phone? So what are some of the trends that we saw as we looked across uh, nearly um, 30 examples, and prior to this, Dahlberg has spent a lot of time working um, with the World Bank and looking at upwards of 100 different mobile health solutions. Focusing in on mHealth education, we looked at uh, 23 different solutions and, and asked ourselves, what are some of the trends? The first one was the age of mHealth education. It's young. We see it's, this is something that's been happening over the past few years. Everyone in this room also knows that, that mobile health is relatively young. And so some of the questions that we start to ask is, what does it mean to be in this nascent state? And what are the questions we should be asking early on um, in, order to, in order to really build this sector as something that can be uh, scalable and sustainable? And those were two issues that came up. So from the perspective of, of sustainability, we looked at the question of who is paying for these, uh, these initiatives? Are they privately funded? Are they donor funded? Majority being donor funded. What does that mean for, for the, the shelf life uh, or the, the, the tenure of these solutions? That How long are they going to be here? How many of these will be here 10 years from now? Um, and what are the questions or challenges around how initiatives are started and how they're funded in the longer term? Uh, the second question being around scale. So as uh, many people talk about the inevitable pilotitis that we see in, in M Health, uh, lots of pilots, some very interesting solutions. Some things work, some things don't work. We're all happy to, at this stage, moving to a point where we're talking about both. How do you move beyond the pilot phase, um, both from a financial standpoint, but also how do you think from right from the beginning about building solutions that are scalable? Again, we have a few colleagues here today who will be speaking about that later this afternoon.